Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Paul Dini's Batman Omnibus. But before we get into that, I do have some cool Batman news to share. So comicbookresources.com broke the story about there possibly being a continuation of the Batman the Animated Series on HBO Max. The co-hosts of Fat Man Beyond, Mark Bernanen and Kevin Smith, discussed that the show is in their early stages with CBR. This isn't the first follow-up to the Batman the Animated Series. There's been movies, Batman Beyond. So the same interpretation of Batman from that show actually appeared in other shows such as Justice League Unlimited and the Fatal Five movie. So I just want to quickly share some of that news with you before we went into this omnibus. Paul Dinini did work on the animated series and he wrote this omnibus. The timing on the release of this news couldn't have gone better with what we're going to discuss today. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be going over Paul Dini's Batman omnibus. Okay Paul! Props if you know that reference. Many of you might know Paul Dini from his work on the Batman animated series and the original DC animated universe, but he was also a popular creator on the comic book series as well. So before we get into that omnibus, I am going to go over my recommendations, which I have right here. I don't have to get into too many details about Batman the animated series because it's so widely well known. And recently they've come out with a few different editions of the Blu-ray Complete animated series set. You can also stream Batman the animated series on HBO Max. What I have here is the deluxe limited edition Batman the animated series Blu-ray set. In this set, you not only get the entire series, you get Batman the Mask of Phantasm and Batman Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. This is a cool set because it comes with some special edition Pop Funkos and some special edition lithiographs. Like I was saying before, Paul Dini did a lot of work on the Batman animated series and a lot of the themes from the series bled over into his ongoing titles and his miniseries with DC Comics. My next recommendation is the follow-up series Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond follows Terry McGinnis after Bruce Wayne retires from Batman. This series follows up on a lot of plot threads left in the Batman animated series. But on its own, it's an amazing self-contained story. This is another one that was recently released on Blu-ray. And I also have the deluxe edition of this Blu-ray as well, which comes with a Pop Funko. It has the uncut Return of Joker movie and its own set of lithiographs. I think many Batman fans would agree that these two series together make the perfect Batman story. Before I get into these two trades I recommend, I do wish they included them in this omnibus. This omnibus does have a lot of the main continuity Batman, but it does have some of the DC Animated Universe tie-ins. However, it is missing two essential Paul Dini comic book series. The first is the critically acclaimed Batman Mad Love. Batman Mad Love was one of the first stories that give an origin to Harley Quinn and really flesh out the Joker-Harley Quinn relationship. For the most part, the adventures of Batman series were geared more to a younger audience, but this book does not shy away from some of the mature elements of the Harley Quinn-Joker relationship. The next one I recommend is the Harley and Ivy miniseries. This miniseries was written about a decade after the completion of Batman Beyond. It's a pretty self-contained story, just about an adventure that Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy go on. And it contains backup stories that are written by Paul Dini based in the animated universe. So even though I really wish they included both these in this omnibus, it is nice to know that the deluxe editions do line up pretty well with the size of the omnibus format. And ultimately on a shelf they wouldn't look too bad together. There are plenty of companion recommendations for Batman by Paul Dini. These are just a few that I could think of, so it's really up to you guys to leave in the comment section your recommendations. Let's pop this bad boy open. Okay, Batman by Paul Dini, The Omnibus. The cover art is by Dustin Wynn, who is a frequent collaborator with Paul Dini. Here's the spine. What I really like about the Batman spines on these Omnibus recently is they're trying to make it more uniform. You can tell what I mean when I put the Scott Snyder and Rise and Fall of the Batman Omnibus right next to it. The back cover does not detail what issues are included in this, but there is a table of contents within the first three pages. Now, it would take me a long time to list every issue that's included in this Omnibus, so what I'll do is I'll just give you a quick overview of what it collects. It collects Paul Dini's run on Detective Comics, Streets of Gotham, some of his Batman tie-ins, a few issues from Gotham Knights, Batman Black and White, and a Batman Annual. Pulling away the dust jacket, we get some Dust and Wind art. The art is an action shot which wraps around the entire cover. Dust and Wind uses a lot of watercolors in his art, so it feels very unique. So again, popping open this omnibus, we see a table of contents to start which is nice to have, but I should note that even though it gives you a page number, the pages are actually not printed on this omnibus. So that's a little bit of a bummer. It makes it harder to find certain stories. So the first few comics are short stories he did for Detective Comics. He collaborates with very popular artists like J.H. Williams, who I believe was just making a name for himself in DC Comics at the time. So as I was saying, there's a lot of elements in this that tie into the Batman animated series or are similar to those elements. But it's not a direct continuation because it's technically the main continuity universe. Another thing to note about this series is a lot of the side characters get their moment in the spotlight. Like in this issue where Joker kidnaps at the time Robin Tim Drake. Tim Drake was also the active Robin in the last part of the animated series. 
So it's cool that we get to see them play with that. And the way he writes the villains are similar to the animated series as well. For example, Scarface is a lot more like his animated counterpart than he is from the main continuity counterpart. And another thing this omnibus does a lot of is highlight Harley Quinn. And without her introduction into the animated universe, we would have never got Harley Quinn in the comics. Harley Quinn has definitely become a cultural icon in the last few years. We see Batman working with Zantana. In this story, we see them take on the Joker and some other villains. Some more Harley Quinn action. There's also a tie-in to this series called Countdown. Countdown was a continuation of 52, which was a very popular series. Countdown was also spearheaded by Paul Dini, but unfortunately it proved to be very unpopular. Too many plot threads that didn't get finished, or too many plot threads that just led out into other series. So this story only contains part of the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. Unlike the Grant Morrison omnibus, there are no recap pages for issues that aren't collected here. So the story really jumps around a little bit too much. It's hard to follow if you're just reading this omnibus. So it would be nice if they incorporated some kind of recap page like they did in that Grant Morrison omnibus. Here we only see what Paul Dini contributed to that storyline. The storyline wasn't well regarded all that much, so it's not like you're missing out on too much. But it could definitely leave a reader confused if they're just reading this page by page without any context of why things are happening. Paul Dini did do a lot of work with Zantana and the animated series, so we do see her pop up here pretty frequently. You could say the same about Harley Quinn. I'm also noticing there's a lot of work with the Riddler in this as well. Also included in this is a Batman RMP tie-in. It's also a follow-up story from Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. In it, we see Hush returns to Menace Batman once again. Hush is a key player in the streets of Gotham, which this omnibus does collect. Also, another key player moving forward is Catwoman. So after the events of Batman R.I.P., Bruce Wayne died in Final Crisis. So most of the series we see of Streets of Gotham follow Catwoman and Hush. Dick Grayson took the mantle of Batman, and Damian Wayne took the mantle of Robin, but they only play side characters in the story for the most part. So in the Streets of Gotham story, Hush is trying to take over Bruce Wayne's identity 100%. This causes the attention of Batman's allies, who don't know how to protect Bruce Wayne's identity while also taking down Hush. There's a lot of side characters, a lot of cops, a lot of criminals who play major parts in the storyline moving forward. There's a subplot about a metahuman drug hitting the streets. It all accumulates to a battle between Hush and Batman after Bruce Wayne returns. The events of how he returns to life is contained in the Grant Morrison omnibus. Another thing I should focus on is Paul Dini really focuses on Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle's relationship. And unlike more recent comic books, this relationship doesn't feel too forced. And you get some compelling dialogue between the two characters. Not that I'm saying there's anything particularly wrong about the newer dynamic. It just seems better fleshed out in this series. So to wrap up this omnibus, we get some of Paul Dini's tie-ins to the animated series. So this issue is actually collected in the Harley and Ivy Deluxe Edition as well. But the omnibus doesn't collect the rest of the story. We also get some of the black and white stories. Batman Black and White is an anthology series that appears every once in a while. At the time of this recording, there's a new Batman Black and White series in comic shops now. We get a story from a recent holiday special. And we wrap up with a short story featuring Harley Quinn in the post-New 52 universe. The back has alternative covers and some character designs from the many artists on this omnibus. And a preview of Paul Dini's script process. So that's the omnibus. Let's take a look at some of the specs. Looking at the spine, you can see that the ribbon is almost completely glued down. The pages in the middle of the book do stay open, which is a plus. But when you get towards the end of the book, you still have to hold them down. As for gutter loss, you do lose a little bit of the art. But luckily, you don't lose a whole lot of the dialogue because the dialogue boxes are pretty far from the edge. Despite some of its structural flaws and the presentation of this omnibus, and I wish they included a couple more stories from Paul Dini, this omnibus is still a great read. In my opinion, and in a lot of fans' opinion, Paul Dini is one of the top Batman writers out there. So if you're a fan of the animated series or just his work in the comic books, this is a great collection to have. I want to thank you guys again for watching. Please make sure to hit that bell for notifications, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment down in the section. Thanks again, guys. Take care and time to get off the omnibus.